Hi there, my name is Jacob and I'm an environment artist for Quixel at Epic Games. This is the first part of our extensive tutorial series covering the creation process of our medieval village demo project. In this one, we'll be going over the basic idea as well as our initial scene setup and blockout, specifically touching on landscape creation and our process for establishing our layout and flow, along with a few tips addressing our level structure. One important reminder is that the entire project is available on the Unreal Engine Marketplace for free for you to download and dive into. So, without any further ado, let's jump in. To start with, let's talk about the core idea for this project. We wanted to finally put our money where our mouth is and show you an example of how to create an interactive experience with high fidelity visuals using Unreal Engine and the Megascans ecosystem from start to finish in an approachable way. So, we started off by imagining a small ramshackle medieval-esque town in the middle of nowhere with a hint of mystery to it to showcase our modular medieval scans. Early on, we collected different sets of references and created loose concepts to help us understand the general feel and layout that we were aiming for. This stage, especially when working with a team of people, is extremely important. Apart from communicating the idea and ensuring that everyone is on the same page creatively, this also gave us a good idea of what assets and features would be important to convey this style we were after. Furthermore, it helped identify areas requiring a bit of research and design early on. For example, with the style of uncapped thatch roofing that was decided upon, we quickly started to test out different approaches on how to make this tricky component work in Unreal Engine. We'll go more into detail on how we created those further down this series. With our reference hunt and general preparation out of the way, let's actually open up Unreal Engine and start laying out the foundation of our scene. For this, I also made sure to enable the Landmass plugin as it will allow for more elaborate landscape creation features later on. As you can see, we currently don't have anything in the editor. Let's change that by going into the Landscape tab and creating a new landscape. I made sure to reference the technical documentation for landscape creation at this point, which is also linked in the description below. I created a rather large landscape to ensure that I had a big enough canvas to experiment with distances and overall layout of our village and the surrounding areas. With our raw landscape created, I quickly dropped in a simple direction light and skylight so I can actually see what I'm doing. At this point, I'm not really worried about light intensity, direction or color at all. The entire lighting and atmospheric setup will be covered further down the line in this series. With that out of the way, now is the time that we can benefit from enabling the Landmass plugin. It allows us to not only use Unreal Engine's regular landscape sculpting tools, but also the new landscape blueprint brushes. These in turn allow us to non-destructively deform our landscape with individual spline shapes, making it very easy to iteratively add land masses to our environment with just a few clicks. Another major benefit is the new layer feature the Landmass plugin introduces. Just like we are used to from other editing tools out there, we can continuously add changes to our landscape in a layer-based approach, allow us to split blockout changes from later polish, decrease the effect of previous edits and generally lose the fear of making major edits to our landscape. We made sure to provide a link to the official documentation in the description below, covering all available settings and possibilities of this new toolset. Now, I simply use both regular landscape sculpting along with the landscape blueprint brushes to shape generic hills and establish basic level composition. With the focus being on our small village, I then started to quickly bring in a few simple boxes to represent our houses and began to work on the actual village layout. Using a very cheap rock asset from this scene's starter content, I also started to block in areas of tree growth to further establish line of sight and composition. Everything at this point is very loose and I'm not worried about using actual assets at all. One thing, however, to keep an eye out for is scale. 
Since we don't want our village to be either comically small or menacingly huge, I dropped in scale references, in this case a human model. For this we can also use Unreal Engine's mannequin or even just a box roughly 180 units tall. It is paramount that we remind ourselves that we are building this environment to be experienced from a first-person perspective. Therefore, we want to make sure that the overall scale of assets and height differences in the level feel natural and grounded compared to the player's height. To get a feel for this early on and spot possible issues, I constantly jump into the scene and walk around the golden path we envisioned for this project, ironing out walking distances, landscape height and composition until I feel that the experience works in this rough form. The benefit of this very rough greyboxing step is, as mentioned before, the ability to quickly and drastically change the scene's layout without losing a lot of work. Depending on your project, you might want to be more thoughtful of known dimensions and pre-plan those to make sure that, for example, modular asset pieces will fit your block out. This is especially important when working with interior scenes. In this instance, we needed to change walking distances quite a bit and drastically adjust the overall layout for the actual size of our modular houses. You'll notice how different the final scene looks compared to these initial steps, so don't be afraid to adapt your initial ideas if it isn't quite working out. During our blockout stage, I also started to further organize the project using sublevels. You can simply create new ones directly from your levels tab by clicking on new and then empty level. I made sure to separate out my blockout and scale meshes so I can easily toggle them on and off. This becomes even more important in later stages when working with multiple people as it allows you to cleanly isolate complex components in your scene. So, with our rough blockout done, we can finally move on to the next steps of actually populating this level with proper assets, continuously adapting layout and scale to ensure a good representation of the initial vision. Now, thank you all so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. In the next video of this series, we'll cover how we actually tackled the buildings of our village, making use of scan data and expanding the visual language by making use of the powerful new geometry tools introduced with 4.26. Also, you'll find all tutorials of this series listed in the description below. Please feel free to drop your questions or thoughts into the comments and, as always, I can't wait to see you in the next one.